everyone lynn here with a brand new video super excited to be doing this diy makeover with you guys um let's get started right away with that diying for me is all about problem solving so the problem that i'm going to be trying to solve here is this entryway so when you come into our front door you can see directly um, through the entire house and we wanted to add a set of doors here that were um, sort of like swinging doors that aren't too permanent but definitely kind of separate the rooms a little bit we wanted a little bit of privacy for when we're in the kitchen or back in the laundry room um, so this is what we're going to be trying to solve for today The main goal of improving this doorway is to have increased privacy. So um, I quickly realized that the doors did not fit um, the doorway to size. Um, it had a big gap in the middle, so I had to think of a way to close that up. So I thought of buying some pieces of wood and attaching them to the doors and having them meet in the middle. So that is what I'm going to be doing. Um, I ended up going to my local hardware store and I got um, two pieces of, I believe, one by six by eight common boards and this was the best option that i could think of to add to the door so that they could close and meet in the middle so this is what we're going to be doing for today Once I was finished taking my measurements inside, the height and width, um, I just went outside and I am grabbing my trusty jigsaw from Ryobi. You guys, when I tell you this tool is so easy to use, um, this is obviously not sponsored, but it is such a great tool. I absolutely love it as a newer DIYer. It definitely helps me to cut wood with ease. I really, really do love it. So I will leave down a link in the description box so that you guys can also try this out if you haven't done so already um, when i tell you this is the easiest power tool to use um, you know you have to be careful but it is just such a great tool to use so i'm going to start out by cutting out um, my pieces of wood and um, just keep going in this project The easiest way to attach this wood to the doors was to use wood glue so I just went ahead and um, removed the label stickers on there and used some tight bond glue. You guys have seen me use this wood glue a lot. It's very sturdy and um, I really trust it to hold all of my projects together. So I just go right into laying out the wood and um, adding as much wood glue as it can possibly take on there. I just went and, and just smeared that in with my fingers and I'm just going to attach that and do it to both of the boards. I'm 
After letting the wood glue dry, I'm going to drill the holes for the screws of the door just to test it out and see if there is anything that I need to adjust. I'm just going to use my drill to pre-drill um, where I want the doors to go um, in the door frame. And then after that, I'm going to start out by testing out the door. And I am going to realize that um, the door frame doesn't meet exactly where I want it to so I'm gonna have to make some adjustments and um, cut the wood again After making all of my cuts, um, the doors did end up fitting together, so I'm just going to um, tape off the hardware and start by painting the door. The paint that I'm going to be using today is actually from the clearance section at my hardware store. It is this deck and siding um, paint, but I absolutely love the color and I also really like the price, so that's what I'm going to be using.
two things actually ended up happening at first the temperature completely dropped in the first clip you can see that i was wearing um sandals and it was like really nice weather actually and then the second thing that happened was obviously because of the time change it gets darker a lot sooner but um it was definitely such a vibe to be able to finish up the doors um i still had a long ways to do go so that's why i just toughed it out put on my coat and finished painting Can outside you the sound? just give me a shout You said always if I stay in your head every day Always on my brain, think of you Everything always fades away And if we do the same always Remember days like the day when we say Always Always You said always I absolutely love how nicely the paint came out i love the color i went in with some dollar tree caulk and just filled in all the gaps and holes gave it a fresh new coat of paint um then i'm gonna jump into another portion of this um diy which is um about the door handles so i absolutely love the um silver door handles that the door has right now um but we do need some door handles in the back so i'm gonna go in with um some cabinet um, handles that I have from our kitchen so because the door is going to be facing the our kitchen it's actually going to match the hardware is going to match the hardware that's in our kitchen so I'm not going to change the front um, handles I'm just going to add the black ones for um, the back of the door so um, here's me installing that
so today I'm going to be talking to you guys about my understairs storage closet that I wanted to redo. So as you can see, this is the understairs um, closet room and um, I needed to just give it a little bit of a makeover. So I did make sure to paint it and I'm going to go in with Dollar Tree's spackling um, just to spackle the walls and all of the um, gaps and spaces that you guys can see here so that we can put this storage closet to use. I wanted a simple rug that I could add to this floor so I added this um, a cute green checkered pattern and it worked out great. Um, so obviously I had to clear out everything that was piled up in this closet so that I can kind of give it a new look and um, yeah I'm glad I painted it all white. Um, the next problem that I wanted to solve inside of this uh, understairs area was the lighting. Um, we don't have a lighting fixture in here and so I wanted to solve it um, using just simple tools so I was able to find this um, LED light strip on Amazon and it's super affordable and it works really well. Um, it has a charging port as well as batteries that you can insert in there so that it can work. Um, these are very easy to use, very easy to install. You just have to peel back the stickers and um, place them against the wall where you want them to be. And so, yeah, that was one of the things that I wanted to do. Um, another thing that I end up doing here is also adding these um, mop grips. They are from the dollar store and if you guys are interested in getting them I would suggest you do because they have a sticker on the back and they hold um, it holds up to three items um, you can have your broom and your mops there and um, it works perfectly for that so um, for the lighting fixture I will be linking it down below it works really well um, so I hope that you guys will give it a try and um, yeah keep on watching and I'll show you what else I got done for this closet our storage space is actually right next to our kitchen, so we needed the space to be able to hang some of our pots and pans that are usually not in use. So I made sure to use some Dollar Tree hooks that I found at the store, and um, I just made sure to install that um, on the walls inside of the closet space. So um, this is what I'm doing. Keep on watching to see what else I did. The next part of the project was for me to paint this door and kind of just give it a fresh coat of paint and um, I made sure to also spray paint the hardware. I didn't have the footage for that but um, it was super fun getting this project done um, and knowing that the space is clean and ready to receive um, all of our storage items. So I just um, went ahead and continued to paint the door and um, add the hinges back to the door. So keep on watching to see the reveal. A cup of coffee and listen to our favorite song. I'm such an idiot, I'm pathetic, thought I was moving on.
hey guys so welcome to another makeover with lynn today i'm going to be doing my first ever big furniture flip and you guys know as always i love recording the process and letting you guys know what materials i use and everything so for today we're going to be working on this beautiful dresser that definitely needs a little bit of tlc so i'm going to make sure to do the best that i can um, from all of the videos that I've watched and everything that I've pieced together to see if I can give this thing a brand new look. to ensure that I have a clean canvas to work with I then made sure to remove this wallpaper from the drawer front and the entire body of the dresser so this wallpaper served its purpose now it must go one thing that I found with the wallpaper was that it left behind a lot of sticky residue on TikTok I saw that someone said that if you spray the WD-40 on there it will remove a lot of the gunk so I will show you exactly what that looks like once you apply it. Okay, so all of these drawers are prepped and ready to go one tip that i do have to remove any residue or leftover wd-40 on these drawers is to use some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel to kind of remove anything from the surface so now that everything is ready i'm going to be using my orbital sander to sand down and rough up these drawers
All right, so after sanding all of that, I wanted to make sure to take off some more layers of the paint. I didn't want it to be too cakey. Um, there are some parts that have chipped in the white paint, so that is why I really wanted to change it. So I just made sure to go in with some citrus strip. I know there's a lot of mixed reviews on this one, but I definitely like using it. it's not a makeover if you are not ordering a amazon package so what i made sure to do was replace the drawer slides that was the biggest problem of this dresser it needed to be a little bit modernized i made sure to buy some replacement pieces um, from amazon and i will link this down below everything that i do in these videos do make sure to check the description box for any other information if something is missing let me know in the comments and i will try my best to find you that information so um definitely i made sure to get these pieces from amazon um, because the front of the drawers were just very lopsided there was a lot of gaps so this helped fix all of that so um, keep on watching
guys lynn here with another project video today i will be sharing with you a faux french door inspired look on my screen door i put this together with a lot of affordable products so i hope you guys will enjoy it and um, please continue to like and subscribe and comment down below any projects you would like to see in the future and please stick around and let's get started So you just want to start by prepping your door. Um, you want to wipe it off with any glass window cleaner. Um, this is going to help you remove any of the dust, any particles that step on the door. So you just want to go ahead and just um, grab any old rag or anything like that to just wipe off the excess dirt that's on the glass. most important pieces that you're going to need for this project are these eight foot crystal white polyesterine traditional latest moldings and you can find these at um, the molding department at Lowe's um, just ask around and they should be able to point you to the right product but this product worked best for me because um, it is just so durable so lightweight and easy to work with so if at any point of this project you need to cut or adjust any of the pieces to fit the door correctly you guys are going to be able to do that with these and um, it's super super easy to use and they're very affordable so um, yeah this will fit perfectly for the project I use an oil-based paint to paint the outside of the door and then I used this spray paint to spray paint the outside of the door. I also use liquid nails to stick the pieces onto the door and then I also bought the gun that comes with the glue. The measurement portion of this project has to be accurate. So you want to make sure that you measure your door and the pieces correctly so that um, you don't do a lot more work later on. Um, you want to start out by laying out all your pieces, stick them on the door with um, any type of um, tape if you want to, to just kind of get the correct sizing. That's what I ended up doing so that I could get um, the proper um, alignment um, so that nothing was crooked or anything like that. Lay them out first before you start um, spray painting them. For the door you want to tape down some newspaper to prevent the um, spray paint to get the door so um, this technique worked out perfectly for me you just want to make sure that nothing is going to seep through um, and another tip um, for this project make sure that when you're spray painting if you're not used to doing it um, just make sure that you spray paint from far away so that you don't get any drips I laid down the middle piece first because this served as a guide for me creating the rows and I was able to add the smaller pieces to it better. I found that smearing out the glue worked better for um, applying the piece onto the door because smearing it out instead of pressing it um, helped from it causing a lot more mess onto the glass so trying to press it down too hard can cause it to just kind of smear everywhere so this I found that this helped better I used some pieces of tape to hold the pieces until the glue dried because it takes some time before that happens
some tape and a small brush you can go back and just adjust anything that you missed any spots that you missed um, so yeah that's gonna help a lot
in the backyard of your old farm in the summer. Stayed there for three weeks where we learned to love each other. For today, I'm going to be doing a mirror transformation. Um, this is a trend that I've been seeing on TikTok a lot. I wanted to try and give this mirror a different look. We've had it for a little while now, and um, I'm going to see if I can flip it and make one of those 90s looks with it. Um, I'm thinking just giving it a bright pop of color and just kind of going outside of my comfort zone just to switch things up a little bit. So let's get started right away with that. This mirror is an item that I thrifted a while back, so I cannot wait to actually get started with um, switching it up and giving it a different look. Um, so what I'm going to be doing actually is taking off the back of the mirror and I'm going to make sure to separate the frame so that I can start working on the frame. Um, I'm just going to use a couple of tools that I have to just pop up the nails and the staples. Um, I'm going to be really careful while I'm doing this so that I don't get hurt. but. Um, I'm really excited to see what this mirror is going to look like, so keep on watching and we'll jump right into the project. I don't like the top of the frame for the mirror, so I'm going to cut it. Um, I think this is going to make the frame look a lot more modern and classy, so I decided to cut off the top with my jigsaw. Working with this frame, you can see that the frame is fairly old, so I'm going to jump right into adding some wood glue to it and stapling it just to reinforce um, the parts that are a little bit shaky. I just wanted to make sure that this was as sturdy as possible so that the mirror wouldn't move. So I just go in with all of those materials and make sure to clamp it together.
Okay, so this is actually my favorite part of this transformation. So I started out by using these rectangular um, wood pieces to lay out um, this checkered pattern on the outside of the mirror. Um, this was actually quite easy to do, so I just used a ruler to measure out where I wanted each of the pieces to go. I then jumped into using wood glue to um, secure those to the wood. And I also used hot glue, but I would recommend not to use the hot glue because that was actually not working for me. So you do want to go ahead and um, if you're really good at Tetris, you'll be really good at this. So I just made sure to measure out where I wanted all my pieces to go. And then um, I continued just to wait for them to dry and keep adding some. Air. So let's keep going. Let me go ahead and sand down this frame before I give it a coat of paint. This is going to help the paint adhere better to the frame. So I'm just going to use a sanding. Suntan, sunscreen, strawberry, ice cream, midsummer's daydream, sipping in between long days, warm nights, gliding like light kites, sapphire, clear skies, whipped cream, cherry pies. Ooh, every year, right around June 21st. Yeah. Ooh, I slip in my swimsuit, diving head first. Everything's coming up, roses. I feel like the world is finally swaying in the sunshine Oh my, 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 it's looking so fine Divine Fields of lavender, Provence weather Evening walks, the fireflies with the twinkling of secrets Whispering sprinklers, bare feet, fingers Running through vineyards
project is coming along great so i want to pair the mirror up with this vase um, that i thrifted um, i'm just going to give it a coat of white paint and as you guys are going to see in the next coming clips i'm also going to be dipping it in the water so i'm going to be doing a water method and the first time that i tried it it actually didn't work but then i kept going and i sprayed pink gold and a few other colors i believe brown and it gave me a really really great result so keep on watching and you guys will be amazed to see how this came out green eyes got stepping at the high life wishing you could be like them they got the fast cars diamonds on the high rise always looking like a 10 yeah, the first class always got everything they wanted Turns out they're only just the same So tell me why you wanna live that kind of life You want your name in flashing lights You wanna chase that shallow high Oh, oh, oh Tell me why you wanna sell yourself a lie Cause in the end you'll realize It's gonna leave you cold and empty on the other side
subscribe, hit the notification bell, and thank you so much for being here. Let's jump right into the project. All right, so the subject for the project today will be this chair that I've had for a while now. We took off the covering and it revealed this worn out um, fabric to me. So I wanted to give it a different look. So I hopped on YouTube and started watching the tutorials of the DIY fabric paint that everyone has been doing. Um, so I made sure to watch as many videos as I could so that I didn't ruin this project. Um, I just made sure to follow their guidance and um, put together a few things and I'm gonna jump right into telling you guys what I did to achieve this look I, I'm really surprised at, as to how it came out um, I know there's a lot of you know unpopular opinion about this uh, DIY but I just wanted to give it a try To start off this project, I made sure to use some blue painter's tape to wrap up the legs of the chair. Um, I wasn't sure how I was going to use the legs of the chair yet, so I just made sure to cover it so that I didn't get any paint on there. Um, so yeah, pretty self-explanatory there. Then I used some gray paint that I bought from Walmart. It's a Rust-Oleum brand and it's okay so i just had it around the house and i just made sure to um use the rest of it and i thought that was going to be the perfect color for the chair so that's what i went ahead and did then i used some fabric softener um also another one that i had around the house and um i made sure to use equal parts paint to fabric softener um so when you're measuring you just want to keep the same measurement so that you can achieve the same result um i found that this gave me the better consistency you want it to be sort of like a little bit thicker you don't want it to be up to quite a paste but you want it to be just like a thicker consistency so that's what i went with then you want to create yourself the most important part of this project a spray bottle of the fabric softener so equal parts fabric softener to equal parts water and um, you just want to make sure that you measure this out and you're going to use the fabric softener every time that you um, start applying the paint. This is really gonna help you guys um, achieve the best look that you can. So keep on watching and I'll show you guys some more tips that you can do for this project. The most important step of this project that you're going to want to implement is using this spray bottle before you start painting. Um, this is going to help your brush to glide a lot better on the fabric and it's going to allow the paint to soak up into the fabric. Um, so just make sure that you keep this spray bottle around every time that you're painting a spot. You just want to keep rubbing and pressing the brush as hard as you can into those tiny areas, into those tiny little grooves um, so that it can soak up the paint. So this is after the second coat and I came inside to make sure it was drying properly and um, yeah so the material is very much like a canvas like material but it's not terrible. I will show you guys that one tip that I did use was that after like layering the paint on um, there are some rough spots so you want to just go back over everything with a 
um, sanding block or anything that you have to like sand it down. Um, this is going to allow it to just bring back the softness of the couch. Once I was done with the chair, I made sure to just sand it down one final time. And you want to make sure that you're wearing a mask for this, um, just so that none of the particles, you know, like you don't want to breathe that in. Um, so safety first, definitely. Um, then I jumped right into um, taking off the tape from the leg of the chair. I was going to add this metallic spray paint onto it. Um, I started to spray it into a container and then just painting it with a brush, but the paint was drying too fast and I couldn't keep up. So I just made sure to bring it outside and flip the chair over and just spray painted it from there. Um, I did take a risk because I didn't want the spray paint to fall on the chair, but thank goodness it did not. So um, yeah, so I just grabbed some metallic gold paint and just started spraying the legs. We had this little side table that I spray painted black, but the footage got lost. So um, I'm going to be adding this uh, black wallpaper that I've used before um, on top of it just to decorate it and set everything together. Alright, so I am definitely a fan of this DIY, you guys. I absolutely enjoyed making this, and I hope that you guys will enjoy trying it too. Um, the supplies and materials are super easy to find. Um, I love that you don't have to have the inexpensive fabric paint to create this. You can just do it with inexpensive material. Um, everything that I use will be linked in the description box below. Um, I'm going to put all the materials that I used and write down... Um, you know some of the measurements that I did and um, I hope that you guys will definitely try this out I love how the texture of the fabric just kind of shows through the um, paint and it just kind of just like enhances all of the beautiful features that I love about the chair so I definitely feel like this brought out the best features of the chair and um, I hope that you guys will try
Okay, so right now we are at the bottom of my stairs and I have been wanting to upgrade and do something different with this space. Um, there's a lot of projects that I have to tackle, so I am breaking them down to tiny little projects. For today's project, I am going to be updating this staircase area um, and I wanted to do so with some faux brick. Um, I found a couple of brick panels in our garage and I thought this would be the perfect um, project to kind of add some more details to the house. So let's get started. Okay, so as you guys can see, this paneling has a lot of real brick detailing. I really love it for this project. So what I did was I brought out all of my tools, uh, my tape measure. I made sure to write down all of my measurements for the wall inside and tried my best to um, translate those numbers onto the panel so that I could go in with my jigsaw and start cutting. Okay, so as you guys can see, I cut out two pieces because originally the paneling is going horizontally. So I'm going to have to cut two pieces and stack them up vertically to fill up the half of the wall that I want to do inside. So as you guys can see here, I have both my pieces and I'm going to get ready to install them on the wall. To install them on the wall, all you're going to need is some nail glue. So I jumped right into spreading that out on the back of the paneling. And then later on, you will see that I will also use my nail gun to ensure that these things do not move. So um, this is just part one of setting this up. Okay, so as I install the second panel, let me tell you guys just a little bit about this project. So 
this project is very beginner friendly um, it was my first time installing faux panels so I absolutely thought this project was easier on the installment part but it was definitely a little bit more challenging with the measurements so for me my wall was actually a little bit like uneven so i had to make some special cuts with the jigsaw and if you're not used to using um any like electrical tools i would recommend the jigsaw because it's a little bit easier to manage than a circular saw for beginners so i would definitely rec recommend a jigsaw um, to cut out everything that you need for this project um, again it's really budget friendly also all you're gonna need are the panels the glue and your nail gun if you don't have that you can use tiny nails and a hammer to just drive that in um, but this project is fairly simple to some degree um, all you have to know is how to um, make your measurements um, even and you know replicate that onto the panel so that you don't have any problems in the future like I did so I had to go back and make some cut adjustments um, but as you guys can see here coming up um, I'm going to be adding some joint compound to fill in the cracks and crevices um, one nice thing about this project is that you can definitely fix a lot of your mistakes um, with any type of joint compound and it will um, help to erase those mistakes and then we're going to jump into painting them and that will be the final step to our makeover Okay, so as you guys can see, the project has come to an end. I absolutely love the brick detailing here. This accent wall came out just as I wanted it to. And um, I hope that you guys will consider doing a project similar to this one. And um, definitely don't forget to like and subscribe. Up next, I will be working on the railing and the staircase area.
I want to jump right ahead into painting the staircase and as you guys can see I do have a little bit of work to do here. Um, I'm going to be removing this um, bar handle here um, so that I can switch things up a little bit. Um, so let's just make sure to remove that hardware. Now that the handlebar is gone, I've removed the hardware pieces and everything like that. I just went into sand and patch up all of the holes and damages that the wall had. So I went in and just made sure to apply um, plaster to them and leave that to dry. So as you guys can see, I am standing at the top of the staircase and this is an area that is definitely a challenge for me because I do not want to get a ladder. I don't want to be up there painting these high ceilings. So I went on the internet and did my research to find tools that could help me do this in a DIY friendly way. I went on Amazon and found some pieces and you guys, I will link all of this down below. Um, so let's see those pieces and go ahead and start finding the paint for the wall. Okay, so we have our products from Amazon. I ended up going with the Mr. Long Arm product line. This is heavily, heavily um, advertised to be able to get those corners and grooves and go um, at a really tall height. So this is the perfect thing for me. So I'm going to be linking those down below. I also went along and got a Sherline corner brush so that I can get the corners. I'm really hoping that these products work. So stay tuned and we will see if that goes well. Next, I ended up needing to color match the hallway color with another color that we have downstairs. So I ended up going to the Home Depot for that technology. And um, it definitely is such a guarantee, you guys. I ended up going with the eggshell um, enamel, I believe, and the lady was super nice to help me out um, with this new process. So I had never done this before, and this is definitely a great option. This is great technology, so I am definitely all for that. So let's go ahead and bring this home with us so that we can start painting the wall.
Got started by removing the handlebar. So I had to make sure to take off the hardware pieces. Um, some of these screws were really old because we basically bought the house like this. So I had to go in and make sure that all of the hardware pieces were removed. Um, I really, really am excited to be able to remove this old paint because it's already chipping and I definitely want to be able to expose the wood and be able to see its beautiful natural color. And I can go from there and figure out what color I would love to repaint the handlebar. So I'm actually going to be using some citrus strip because that is one of the best methods of removing old paint that I've found. So I just am going to make sure to take this outside, lay it on a piece of glass and make sure that I can remove the paint as much as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and just use citrus strip and make sure that it's completely removed the old paint before I can start sanding, staining, and whatever else I want to do later. <laughs> Okay, so as you guys can see, I already started sanding. This is actually my favorite, favorite part of this DIY. Um, seeing the exposed wood handlebar is absolutely amazing to me. So I was absolutely living for this part. And um, I'm glad that I was able to use my orbital sander to just be able to get off the excess paint. So um, I just went in. I don't remember which grit sandpaper I started off with, but um, I just made sure to gradually um, get finer and finer 
to be able to remove um, the coarser part of the paint that was stuck on the wood. So I'm just going to keep doing that and prepping the wood and we will see what else is coming up next. <laughs> My goodness i absolutely love the exposed wood look on the handlebar so far so good um this is actually a lot of work sanding down all of this and getting it all prepped but next we're going to add this exposed wood effect to it so here is the tip that i have for you guys so you're going to be using um, equal parts water to equal parts paint and you want it to be as runny as possible and you're just going to apply it onto the wood that you are trying to lighten and spread that out on there and then make sure to go in with a rag as you guys are going to see that I'm doing here. Um, so I just use a paintbrush to get that evenly onto the piece of wood. You just want to leave it there for about maybe three to five seconds and then you want to wipe it off. You don't want it to dry completely. Um, so this was the look that I ended up going with it. I didn't want to stain it a darker color. I didn't want to repaint it. I thought that this would look looked beautiful and I thought that I'm thinking that it's going to look perfect with our staircase look that we're going for so stay tuned for all of that let's get this wood prepped and lightened before we can install it
Okay, you guys, so this project is definitely moving along great. I am super excited about that. Um, the next thing that I ended up doing was bringing out the support bar um, outside so that I could cut a slight slant on it um, so that it can fit inside. So I had to make sure to use my um, jigsaw for this. Um, if you don't have a jigsaw, a handsaw would work perfectly fine because I'm not cutting a big piece of wood. So definitely, you know, switch up these projects however that fits your budget you know so um go ahead and use what you have i am definitely a firm believer of doing that so i am just gonna get started i made sure to trace out where i wanted to cut on the wood and i am just using my jigsaw like i said to cut this um this jigsaw is super beginner friendly and you guys should definitely um consider getting one of these if you do a lot of projects so you guys will see here that i am I'm starting to install this um, bar here and making sure that it aligns well with the um, brick wall. You guys, look how good the brick wall looks. I am so excited with how it turned out. Um, go ahead and check out all those other videos and um, don't forget to like and subscribe and keep on watching and I will show you guys how I was able to put this up. Okay, you guys, so I've brought in the wood from outside now and it is completely dry, ready to go. Um, so I am making sure to reinstall the hardware the proper way. I absolutely love the color of this wood against the um, slightly tannish grayish walls that we have going on here and I absolutely love it. Um, so this is what the hardware turned out to look like after I spray painted them gold. Um, I just wanted to give them a brand new 
look so this is how i'm going to install them um, i'm just using my screwdriver to reinstall those back on there
we're doing a mini closet makeover okay so we are headed into the spring season there's a lot of spring cleaning happening around here and i needed to tackle this little project here so i thought why not just film it um so right here i have this closet um space here but actually we used a clothing rack in this corner and it actually isn't functional anymore because it is very wobbly it doesn't hold the weight of the clothing anymore so we definitely have to switch that out i remember purchasing it from amazon um i'm going to use the pieces for something else later in the future but for now i'm just going to disassemble it and in the meantime while i'm taking all of that stuff down i just wanted to let you guys know um if you are new to the channel definitely make sure that you are subscribed so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that i'm doing i have a lot of new things coming up for the spring season so definitely look out for that um and if you are returning to the channel thank you so much for being here you guys i really do appreciate you so anyways starting with the project i'm just going to make sure that i finish taking down all of the um, parts of this closet then i'm going to jump into doing some quick cleaning um, i'm just going to use my vacuum to vacuum up the carpet and make sure that the space is nice and clean for the project okay so a little bit of background about why i'm doing this project this is actually my brother's room i offered to help him with his closet situation because um the clothing rack was not steady anymore when you hung too much clothes on it it would lean on one side so um my brother ended up having to put some of his clothes on the floor and this was not feasible for him so i offered like the nice sister that i am um to help him fix this whole situation so the first thing that i'm going to do is measure out the distance between um where i want to add the pole so i went ahead and grabbed my tape measurer and measured out everything that i needed so keep on watching and i'll show you everything else that i ended up doing for that Okay, so now that I have everything prepped, I'm going to be using these pole sockets here. These little guys are super easy to use when you're installing things. So if you're going to need one for your closet or anything like that, I'm going to link it down below um, on Amazon so that you guys can also get yourself one if you need it. Um, but I'm going to quickly install this up on the wall and uh, let's continue with this project. I know, you know, we know we're on fire The sparks in your eyes are what the focus of our project today are these two couches. Um, we've got one that seats two people and we have one that seats four people. So we're going to be working on these two couches for sure today. And um, the purpose of the video is definitely to just be able to um, change the fabric out. Um, we're going to actually head to Hobby Lobby to pick out the fabric. And um, also um, I'm going to add a few features to the couch that's just going to bring some life back to it. And um, we're going to also paint the um, frame of the couches just to give them some life. So come along with me for that. 
The couch that sits for people needed a little bit more repairs, so I jumped in with a drill to reinforce some of the pieces that were shaking or some of the pieces that actually got detached from the wood. I made sure to reinforce those screws so that the chair would have a lot more support. Going around and checking and seeing if any of the pieces needed to um, be reinforced so that um, the frame would have as much support as possible. Um, then I'm going to jump right into flipping over the couch because I do have one more project that I want to do before adding the fabric to them. So I actually went on Amazon and I started to look up um, legs for couches and chairs and I stumbled upon these ones and I actually loved the design of them and I felt like they fit the style of the couch that I wanted to do. Um, I didn't like how low the couches were, so I wanted to make sure that I would have um, add a little bit more height to the couches. So I jumped on Amazon and I found these um, beautiful legs that are super easy to install. I'm going to link them down below in the description box. So if you're interested in purchasing them, um, do be sure to use the link for that. Um, but yes, so these legs come with all of the pieces that you need to attach them. It's super simple to assemble them. Um, you just want to make sure that when you're drilling, you're not running into any other screws, but this was super simple. It also comes with pads for the legs and you guys, let me show you how I was able to install this, these legs to the couch. You're my light in the dark, even though you are tired. The next part of the project is to sand down both of the frames for the couches. Um, I'm going to be using a black Rust-Oleum paint that I've used on the channel before, I believe, but um, it comes out blue, but when it dries, it dries a dark midnight black. So I absolutely love the color for this couch, so keep on watching. the couches at home to dry and went right over to Hobby Lobby to find my fabric. I chose this beautiful floral pattern that had a dark background because I felt like it fit the frame of the couches beautifully. So um, I'm just going to lay out the fabric here and make sure that it fits on the foam for the couch. And I'm going to do this for both of the couches. I'm going to make sure to measure and cut my um, fabric to size and make sure that everything fits well. Then I'm going to start by 
um, hand stitching the fabric onto the foam and um, it turned out very beautifully um, it fits very well so I cannot wait for you guys to see the end result of this project so keep on watching to see how I was able to staple the fabric onto um, the pillowcases and everything like that so keep on watching This chair is a chair that we've had for a little while now and it actually needed a great makeover. Um, it's been in our garage for a little while and um, so it's been missing an arm. So I actually have to put all those pieces together and then um, I'm going to get right down to sanding it and priming and giving it a fresh coat of paint. So come along with me so that we can do that together.
have been so motivated to get some odd projects out of the way just before the weather turns so this is one of them um as you can see this front um i would call it maybe like a planter box situation that we have here has been taken over by the thistles and everything like that so um i just am going to clean out all of those um you know plants that we don't need and then conserve the lilies and other things that we have and we're gonna replace it with some um, pretty rocks I feel like that's gonna just elevate the look up here um, anything is better than what it looks like right now so um, come along with me for that so the planter box actually covers two areas so there's one on the right side and one on the left side and the one on the right side has a lot of tall grass whereas the other side has a lot of thistles um, that are just overgrown so I'm going to use some gloves to just pull those out. Um, some of them were a little stubborn but I just kept going and pulled out as much as well basically everything before um, jumping into adding the um, rocks and stuff like that. After weeding everything out, the next step was to add the fabric on top of the soil. We saved all of the bulbs that we had um, for the flowers that are going to be popping up in the spring. We took those out and then we're going to lay out the fabric and I'm going to add, um, I'm going to cut some holes into the fabric so that the plants can come through 
and um, we're going to jump right into adding the rocks next. But um, for this uh, fabric, I'm hoping that it works really well. I've heard good reviews about it. I'm going to link it down in the description box below if any of you guys are interested in doing this project or if you have something similar and you need um, something like this um, to help you out. So uh, we barely used we didn't even use a, a full roll we had a smaller batch left over so we just worked with that but um those materials are definitely very helpful for this project can you see me now see me now when i fall back down Just letting you guys know that the plants that I have out right now are not going to stay there. These are usually the flowers that we have outside here and I've preserved all of the bulbs and the succulents. Um, we put some of them in the back in our backyard but this is what the flowers look like um, when they come out. So I'm really glad that I was able to prepare the space for next year. So I definitely will update you guys next spring when everything starts popping out. The idea that I have in my mind for this space is something that I've been doing a little bit of research for on Pinterest and Google, just looking at different ideas. But my idea is to have um, the planter boxes and then the post standing in them, adding a little bit of cement or concrete and um, filling them up with that and then having them um, string the lights and everything so this is the idea that i'm going for
Once the poles were sanded down and painted, I made sure to let them air dry. Then I went right into um, making sure that they were the same height um, so that I didn't have any height differences for when I set them into the concrete. Let's go right ahead and get these posts into the concrete mix. First, I'm going to start by prepping the um, posts by adding some pallet boards. This project was a little bit of um, trial and error for me. These pallet boards were a little bit too thick for what I needed. So once I realized it was too thick and that the screwdriver wasn't going to drive the nails through them i went ahead and grabbed some thinner pallet boards as you're going to be able to see here and this was actually a lot helpful for me um it was it worked a lot better um the screws were able to hold the posts in place so you want to be able to do this so that your posts don't shake or move when you're trying to add your concrete mix and also make sure to use your post leveler as you know you want to make sure that they are as level as possible the next step you're going to want to also start doing is to add some rocks so as soon as i saw the opportunity i started adding the rocks in there because they are going to act as a base for your concrete mix this is going to allow the barrel to have as much weight as possible and this is going to really really help you um, have the best, um, the most sturdy concrete that you can.
once I made sure all the posts were ready to go, they are steady and, you know, prepared for the concrete, I just made sure to um, grab a bucket of water. Um, I went along with the instructions on the concrete mix bag. Um, it tells you exactly how much water you're supposed to add so that you don't have a um, consistency that is too wet or a consistency that is too dry. Um, so you just want to follow the instructions as best as you can. Um, also, I would tell you guys to be careful if you're using the concrete that you are protecting yourself. Um, you don't want to breathe in any of that dust um, because it can be very harmful to you. So to make sure that you um, use as much safety as you can. And so, yeah, I'm going to begin by opening the bag and pouring it out into the bottom of the um, barrel. And this is going to help um, just to flatten it out. So I grabbed the tool and I started flattening it out before adding the water. And then I just made sure to mix that around a little bit. The bag did say that the concrete would set in about 30 minutes. Um, so this worked out pretty great for me. I was really excited once I saw that um, the posts were looking pretty legit at this point. I was really excited. So I just went around and repeated the same step for all of those posts. Um, I just made sure to pour it in, flatten out the top, and add my water, and this was working out pretty, pretty great. You do want to make sure that um, your posts are still leveled. Um, you don't want anything to knock them over, um, so just make sure that's ready. So the next day I ran back there to make sure that all the posts were um, set and ready to go. I was a little bit fearful that something had fallen over, but alas, everything was great. Um, nothing fell over and everything set right. So I did make sure to go over and unscrew the pallets that were holding the posts up. So um, then I just made sure to go around and make sure that I didn't have to add anything else to them. So I made sure to let them just completely dry up. This fireplace has been this color for a while now and we do not like it. 
Um, I love the stone layout and the stonework, but it needs a little bit of TLC, okay? Um, so I'm going to jump right into using um, this black paint that I got from Walmart. It's actually a little bit more gray than black, but it does the job pretty well. That's the exact paint that I use for the post. So I jumped right into painting those, and there was a little bit of the concrete around it that was actually falling apart a little bit and um, we did use some concrete to um, put that together but I forgot to get any footage from that. One of this was to just um, just give it a fresh coat of paint. But then we jumped right into painting this, um, it's like a metal wood holder, um, and it was actually kind of rusty, so we made sure to add some paint to that too, and just gave it a fresh coat of paint. Then um, I did jump into painting one of the um, vine fences that we had. So we had a lot of vines back here and it was actually really, really pretty. And um, well, because we switched out our fence, we had this uh, post still left with all of the um, leftover like vine grid on it so I didn't cut out anything I actually left this piece and I actually wanted to use it later on so I did make sure to paint that and um, it turned out pretty great um, so then I jumped right into um, finding well digging a hole for it so I had my dad help me so we made a hole into the ground and actually installed it and it turned out pretty great. So um, the idea for this is to have um, flowers on there and um, yeah, just as like a nice little decorative piece to it. Not done with the project just yet so i'm going to be using my drill so that i can add the hooks to the top of the post so this is actually going to help me to um, be able to add the lights and a tarp up at the top here um, the position that i put the lights is not going to be how it stays but i just wanted to give it a try and see how it was going to be um, i just used some zip ties to keep them up and you guys are going to see how i continue adding that on
Okay, so this is the last step for completing backyard makeover. So you guys, this is going to be me adding sand to the pavement that we have back here. Um, one of the things that's been happening is that um, the pavement has been separating a little bit and sand actually helps to um, keep them together. So I've been using just a big industrial broom to broom the sand in between the rocks so that they can set right. And once the sand is nicely covered all over the pavement, it looks really nice. The first thing we're gonna do today is attempt to put up a tarp on the post. So I've got four posts laid out for the tarp and um, I have two other posts laid out for the lights and I'm going to start by using this um, cover that I purchased a little while ago and um, the design is basically that you can have protection from the sun and that is something that I really am prioritizing for um, this backyard space here because um, sitting out during the day can be merely impossible if you don't have a cover so this is what I'm going to be Now that we have the lights installed, the next step is to add a carpet back here. Um, if you guys will take a look in the first video, I was talking about adding sand to this pavement back here, and you guys can see how that turned out. Um, it looks really great with the sand on it, and um, it actually filled up all those grooves that were getting empty and where they were lifting. So it really brought out just the beauty of the pavement back here, and I absolutely love it. So I rolled out this carpet to um, just complete the seating area. And this was the next step into um, starting to decorate and making everything sort of feel very homey. I used some storage bins because I didn't have any other um, planter barrels to add the other two um, posts and this flower baskets that I've had for a while now I wanted to just paint the outsides white and just kind of give them a different look um, I didn't mind the inside being green but I just wanted to um, give the outside some white coat of paint so I used a can of rust-oleum um, 2x paint and primer to cover those two up and I really liked how it turned out 